Hello, we're going to be studying vocab, naming, and line construction. This is our second section of geometry. This will actually be the first part where we actually start talking about geometry since we reviewed the last section. So let's get started. You have a vocabulary sheet on your notes and in your notes. Your vocabulary sheet actually has all the definitions of all these on them. We also have note sheets where you can draw in these and then write any kind of little notes next to them about how to name them and what what little little um, necessary things you need to make sure that you learn. So as we go through these you can write out the vocabulary on them or you could just write the notes that you need about them since you already have your definition sheets next to you. All right. Here we're going to start the vocabulary. We're going to start with what a point is. A point is some is a coordinate in space that has no dimension. It's usually drawn with a dot. I want you to notice that it's labeled with one letter, and that letter is a capital letter. This is point A. We don't write the word point A. We usually just call it A. Now we're going to talk about a line. And a line is a collection of points along a straight path that extends endlessly in both directions. Now we draw that with a straight, with a, as a line here. And it's straight. It has two arrows at each of the ends. And we usually name it with two points on it, but we can name it with a cursive letter like this. I want you to notice that on this one that I have here, we name it, but we don't just call it AB. Above it, we have a symbol above it. And notice that it's got arrows on both ends, indicating that that is line AB. We have a cursive letter, and if we're going to name it with a cursive letter, we draw it near the one of the the arrow parts of the, or the, yeah, I don't want to really call it an end because lines don't end, but it's the ending of the drawing portion of it on one near the arrows. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. We have the word linear in there, or even line right here. Co means together. So these are points that are together on a line. A and B are both collinear. I want to make another note though, but any two points are always on a line. No matter where I draw two points, I will be able to put a straight line between them, or a line between them. But three points is the trick. Three points may not be collinear if they're drawn in this triangle fashion, but they might be collinear if they are right on a line. I could draw a line through them. Our next vocabulary word is plane. A plane is a flat, quote flat, surface that extends without end in all directions. I have drawn it here as a parallelogram, but we can draw it as a parallelogram or a rectangle. But I want to note that a plane really has no shape, as in rectangle, circle, or so forth. But when we draw it, it is that shape. A plane goes in all directions, endless. It is no thickness, it's, that's what the word flat was used. We name it with a point on the plane. There, there's a point, or we can also with a, a letter, and we'll show you that in a minute. Points that are coplanar are points that lie on the same plane. We have that word co again. So they're points that are together on the same plane. If I have a plane here, I have all those points are on that plane. Those are coplanar. 
I also have a letter all by itself that doesn't have a point next to it. And we can name it with that one. So we can call this plain M and plain ABC. Notice that we do put the word plain in front of it, unlike the word line that we didn't write earlier. Now it's your turn for a couple questions. When we were in class, we talked about this little dotted area right here. That dotted area shows that it's going through the plane. So we have a plane here that this, the top line, H, E, is going through, like stabbing it through. The line A, E, F is lying on top of or on that plane. So I would like you to go ahead in your notes there to name three points that are collinear, four points that are coplanar, and three points that are collinear. You can stop this at any time if I'm not giving you enough time to do this. Go ahead and pause the video answer the questions and come back. Please feel free to do that at any time. Pause the video, try to do the problems, and come back. Let's do the first ones. The three points are collinear. We have some collinear, and notice I said three, not two. These three in here, the A, E, F, are all collinear, meaning they're all on the same line. Now, four points that are coplanar, points that are on the same plane, H is not on that plane. That, that point is above because of that line is stabbing through the plane. But these four points are on the same plane. So we have A, E, F, and G. The last three are three points that are not collinear. There are multiple answers to this. As long as I list G with any of these, they are not collinear. So I could have named A G E. I could have named I could have named AEF, excuse me, GEF. I could have named um, these three AGF. Then I could list lots of things with H because. H is not collinear with any three of those. So I have multiple things that I could just substitute an H in for all those G's. There's a lot of possibilities for this. Let's do some more vocabulary. Line segment. A line segment is just a portion of a line or part of the line having endpoints. And so when we draw them, we put dots at the end. When we name them, we put a little line right above it. Notice that it doesn't have arrows, just like we, um, the, unlike the one we had before. Now we're going to talk about a ray. We have a ray, and it's symbolized by the arrow with one, one arrow in, on it not two. An array goes only in one direction. It's part of a line, but it has an end point this time. Notice that's the A, and it goes a direction. We have a line this time. I want you to just see the difference. The line has an arrow on both sides, where an array has it only on one. I want you to make sure you realize that it is important that when you're naming this, you 
name it in the right direction. You cannot name this ray BA. The first one must be the end point. So you must name this one ray AB. We must start with the end point. If you had the ray that was this one here, you would have to name it. This one, you could name it ray BA. Notice that the, the arrow is pointing this direction, but my naming arrow always goes towards the right. Now we're going to talk about an opposite ray. An opposite rays, excuse me, two opposite rays, the, excuse me, an opposite ray R, two rays that point in opposite directions to form a line. So I have a ray that goes this way and another ray that's over here. When I'm naming them, notice that I started with C on both of them because C was the end point for the first ray. And C was the end point for the other ray. But notice that my arrows are both going towards the right. Now we're gonna, you're going to do this one by yourself also. Pause the video. You're going to draw three collinear points. And then on with those three collinear points, you're going to draw JK. And I'm not going to tell you that symbol. I'll have you look back at your notes. L to KL with that symbol. And that represented with that symbol. And LJ represented by that symbol. In class, we compared it with a neighbor. And I'll let you pause it and come back when you're done. Here's the solution. We drew three non-collinear points. You could have drawn them in various places. They didn't have to be looking like this. But between the J and the K, we're going to draw a line. We knew that because we had that symbol above it. We're then going to draw the KL, and it's going to be a line segment. We know that because of the line there. And then we're going to do LJ, and it is a ray starting with L and going towards the J because of the symbol that's above there and because L was listed first. So it's going in the direction of J. Now you're going to draw two lines. We're going to label on the lines and name two pairs of opposite rays. I'm going to let you pause that. Do that. One. And we talked about them in class afterwards. So um, when you're done, I'll explain what I did. There are a lot of options for this. You could have drawn them. You didn't have to have them intersect like I did. My opposite rays for this one are XM and XN. For this one, my rays go XP and XQ. Your letters did not need to be M, X, P, Q, N. It could have been lots of different ones, and they didn't have to intersect as long as you had opposite rays. For me, I only had five points because mine did intersect. This brings us to the whole fact of intersection and intersect. These are just, in the English department, we have... The difference between these two are one's a noun and one's a verb. The word intersect are, when, is when two or more figures that have one or more point in common. 
But the word intersection describes what become what is created by two figures that have that are intersecting. So we have here a verb that says that two geometric finger figures have intersected. And this is the shape that become that is formed by that intersection. It's a set of points or figure it's, it's the set of points figures have in common when they intersect. So right here let's go back actually let's go back a little bit. When I have a line that intersects with another line We can say that line A intersects line B. And so we used this term. But their intersection is what is a result. And that's the point, and we can call that point D. So the intersection of those two lines is D, a point. All right, now we're going to draw some three-dimensional figures. We're going to sketch a line that intersects a plane at one point. And so first you're going to draw a plane and a line, and right now it looks like a piece of paper with a pencil laying on top. And to make this look more 3D, we're going to emphasize where the two come together. And then we're going to put dotted lines to show that those dotted lines are underneath. This one's a little more complicated. We're going to draw two planes that intersect. When you draw yours, it's going to be best that you draw them very similar to mine, just so that you're more successful. You're going to draw two planes. First, I'm going to make my first one rectangular, and then the second one slanted and looking more parallelogram. Both of them are parallelograms, but the second one's not a rectangle. We're going to emphasize where they intersect. Notice that we had some points here where kind of almost like making a corner in a sense. In a sense. These two planes are going to intersect and their intersection will form a line. Next, we're going to draw the dotted lines the dotted or dashed, they indicate the place where it's hidden or on the other side. And here's where it's going to just, I think for me it just popped out that I could see it better. We're now going to give an emphasis of color, a color change, so that you can understand what's going on. For me that helped a lot to be able to see that the blue one was going through the purple one. Now I'm not going to have you draw planes on your homework, but by you going through this activity and drawing these with me, when you see drawings in your homework, it's going to be easier for you to understand where those dotted lines, excuse me, what the dotted lines mean and how that this is 3D. All right, we're going to do a construction on copying a segment. You're going to be able to find, I'll point you to some videos for this. This would be something you have to like watch me and just to see it and so I will have you um, I'll point you to some, some links for these so you can find those we did these in class together alright we didn't get a chance to do this matching activity in class it was something I encouraged you to do at home but those pictures will re be referred to in your homework We went over any questions. I also told you that there was a week one construction assignment that you needed to print. It wasn't something that originally was with everything. It's very short and you can do it along with any of the assignments this week. We're going to go to the next section. So I'm going to wrap up this video and I'll see you at the next one at 1.3. See you then.